Hi guys, Pete from Mixcat. I'm going to show you how to actually make the ethanol. Got a lot of requests for this, so I'm going to show you my distiller that I made. On the right hand side, I just have an aluminum um, kettle pot that's a big, uh, kind of like a stew pot or a broth pot. I uh, got it cheap at Walmart. I want to say I paid like 15 bucks for it. You can use like a five gallon bucket. Uh, basically what this is, is just ice water. Um, with this ice water, I have, a, yikes, as I knocked the whole thing over, I have a, a pump. This pump is going to feed the uh, pipes here. Uh, this is my chiller. We, this is, uh, the alcohol is going to come up through here as vapor, and it, con it condenses down into a liquid. As it comes down here, it's going to be super hot, and it's going to be a gas form. Um, on the top of this is where the water is going to come in, feed it with ice water, and turn this uh, coil ultra cold. And you'll see the condensation come off of that, and it allows for the uh, alcohol to collect towards the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and fill up my, this was a rice cooker, uh, or a, um, what do they call it, a pressure cooker. Um, th those are pretty cheap to get. Uh, what I did was I drilled out the top, and I got a fitting. With that fitting, it goes up into copper, and I soldered all this. i give you kind of a good shot of it. And if you guys want me to make you one, just shoot me an email. Um, I'll give you a quote. I, I do make these, so that, that's not a problem. But again, you do need an uh, ethanol permit for this. As always, when making ethanol, um, and this is a little bit of a process, do keep a fire extinguisher around. Be very, very careful because um, you are dealing with very high proof alcohol and it could explode on you. Um, I do this outside in my garage with the garage door open over uh, one of those hot pots. Um, the little single burners, these things are great. Uh, you can use them anywhere, sure beats in an open flame. Um, most of the time when these people get into trouble with uh, alcohol going up, it's because they have an open flame and having um, a single burner like this that's electric, you don't have to worry about that, so it makes it a lot safer. There's my mash. As you can see, I'm using the uh, cornmeal on the bottom with the yeast and the sugar. Um, I did a video a little while ago about that, so refer to my older videos uh, if you need to know how to make a mash. I pull off this, it's a rubber glove with tape, and you can see towards the top, it's pretty clear. So that's almost um, pure alcohol towards the top. You could really smell how strong this stuff is. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pour this into my pot and warm that up. Let me show you the process. Not really rocket science here. Here's my distilled pot, and I'm going to pour this mash into the, the pot. I'm going to fill this up almost all the way. I'm going to leave a little bit of lip on there. This one's a little bit over a gallon. Almost two gallons. It's a big pot. And as you can see, not rocket science. Just put it in there. We're going to heat it up just below boiling. And the vapors are going to come up, cool off, turn into liquid, and pour into a, a cup. A little bit more. There we go. You can see it's probably about 80, 85 percent full. See if that's yeah. You can see a good shot of that. I'm going to put my pressure cooker top with the coils on there. And I like the pressure cookers because they seal real nice. There we go. Turn him right here, that way it's got good access to our pump. Let me set up the pump here. Alright, that's going to go on the top. Usually I have this plugged in, but I just got done cleaning this out. Let me grab another hose. This is going to feed back into the pot, so we're going to have a cycling cool water. Let me plug that in and show you how that works. Again, this is something I can make you guys, or show you where to get the parts. Not a problem.
There we go. I just turned on the pump, and you'll see it's cycling that cold water through. So it keeps this coil real nice. Yeah, it's getting very cold already. You'll start to see condensation. I'll zoom in there just in a minute. And essentially, we just put our little mason jar down there. There we go. Yeah, it's actually building up some condensation. I'll zoom in. Uh, don't have much more zoom on the camera. Okay. Well, you'll have to take my word for it. It is starting to really chill. You can see on the pot, the drip's kind of building up on it. Forgive me for my camera work here. It's one man operation. I'm going to go ahead and turn on this pot and I'll get back to you guys as soon as we start getting something. Yeah, actually, that is on. Okay, perfect. Thanks, guys. Okay, there's a zoom in on the, the coils. You can see the condensation. Got some water right in there. Let me touch it so you can kind of see. Yeah, it's it's wet. But yeah, the uh, condensation's building up. This is definitely a great pump solution. Let me show you the the cable. It's it's white. It's normal water and it's ultra chilling the the coil right now. That's going to combat the um, the vapors that are coming out of the top because keep in mind this is just under boiling that's going to be coming out of this kettle so it's going to take it back down to a liquid state and bring it back into your uh, collector and right now I just set up the collector let me let me zoom out real quick there's a good shot of the operation um, you can see the little blue lights on for the um, the little burner and it is cycling the water with the pump I have that plugged into a surge protector just in case and also I have a uh, fire extinguisher here just in case we run into problems but we're not going to run into problems I've run this several times without issue so th this is definitely one of the most efficient ways to um, distill some ethanol and you could do this on a much larger scale if you want to really brew a lot of et ethanol. Um, I've seen people actually instead of use something this size where you're talking um, a little bit over a gallon you can go up to a, a keg size but it's going to take a long time for you to get that keg uh, to heat up and uh, you're probably going to need a more powerful uh, burner but uh, still doable with the burner um, just the process is going to take a lot longer but your volume would be a lot better so up to you guys how you want to do this. Uh, this is really small, compact, so you can fit it anywhere. I do it in the garage, but I've done this on the stove, and you're going to get a lot of um, a lot of odor from it. You're going to smell that corn. It almost smells like you're baking something. And when the uh, alcohol starts coming out, um, it, it's real pungent, so you'll stink your whole place out. You definitely don't want to do this in the house unless your wife's okay with it. Um, mine said put it in the garage so <laughs> we're going to respect your wishes and not stink out the house but that's that's a shot of it and i will come back to you probably in about 15 minutes when it's producing thanks guys all right it's been about 15 minutes and it's dripping very lightly not much of a stream but you can see that condensation building up that i was talking about that's what really keeps the um that those pipes cool and allows the gases, uh, the steam, to condense down into a liquid. But I'm going to come back in about five minutes and we'll probably have a nice stream coming out of there and I'll show you guys the progress. Isn't that music to your ears? Drip, 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 drip. Yeah, it's chugging away there and you can see I have a nice little reserve of uh, ethanol going. I'm going to let this run probably for about an hour and we'll have a good deal of ethanol and show you the results. As you can see here, the ice melted out. Still cold water, but we're going to add some more ice to that. Alright, that should be plenty to make it through the end of this process here. I'll give you a shot of the, the ethanol. Got quite a bit in there already. So, once that's done, I'll light some up to show you it's very flammable. Um, you get a 100% blue flame, and it's starting to get a little dark, so it should show up nicely. But you can see it's a nice steady stream there. Alright, thanks guys. Hey guys, this Jamie's starting to slow down, still dripping. I'm going to fill up a little cup here and show you how flammable it is. 
There we go, we're filling up a little cup and I'm going to hit it with a torch and you can see how blue the flame is. There you go. It's burning real nice. As you can see, this is extremely flammable. And we kind of shut one of the lights off. Now you can see how bright that is. Well, real nice. Slightly flammable.